Hi everyone, this is Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada, and I hope you guys are all well. Today I'm really, really pleased and delighted to have Daryl Wilson, CEO and the Chief Designer, I guess. Is that your other title? At Wilson Audio. Is, many, that, is that your other title? Yeah, many hats. Many hats. Many hats yeah. yes. Among those is firefighter, therapist, and motivational speaker. Cool. <laughs> Bill Payer, Chief Ass Kicker. <laughs> <laughs> We'll add that to the list. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> delete that. Anyway, we're really, really excited to have Daryl uh, joining us on Zoom today. Thank you very much, Daryl, for joining us. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. And it's good to see you. And you. Too bad we can't be doing this uh, uh, in life, but better than nothing. Yeah, last time we did this, we were at uh, Rocky Mountain, wasn't it? We yes. sat down. No, and... it was Rocky Mountain. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it yeah it was, it was the, uh, the launch of XVX. Right. Yeah, that was and I remember so excited. I, I was my heart was beating like crazy, thinking I gotta have this pair because I knew I couldn't afford the whams, and I always wanted a pair of whams. And now, you know, this seems sort of doable, but I had to save up for it. And thank God, this year uh, it manifested. So thank you very much for your help and for designing such amazing speakers. Yeah. So I thought we'd catch up. Um, let, well, let me let me stop you there and and thank you for your support. Really, oh. you're doing a fantastic job. My pleasure. Thank you. So I thought we'd catch up because along the way, uh, we started this, we decided to do a series of um, videos on the XBXs. I think, I think we just lost you. Are you still there? I'm still here. Oh, okay, good. Your video just froze for a second. Um, so um, uh, I thought we'd just do a, a, a series of videos on the XBXs and at the same time, catch up also on the Alex V because uh, you recently launched on the Alex V, and I thought that was very, very cool. So, uh, but but first, let's step step back a little bit and talk about what Wilson's sonic goals are. I mm. remember uh, talking to David a number of times about this, and of course, on his videos in the past, and he talks about these two premises: um, dynamic contrasts and harmonic expressions. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about this? Elaborate uh, on these two points, and then maybe we'll go a little bit further on these. Yeah, the, um, there, there are a lot of goals that a, des a designer will um, will strive for to get, you know, the sound and, and the, the musical representation that they're hoping for from their designs. Uh, my dad always talked about dynamic contrast, harmonic expression as being two key elements that the system has to do. Uh, if we use a, a, a guitar um, as an example, the pluck of a guitar, a simple one string pluck, that information really it, it all the drivers in a system are activated by that one musical event so you've got the body of the instrument you've got the interface between your finger or the pick and the and and the string itself and then you have that the harmonic expression of the event so without dynamic contrast harmonic expression and, and one more thing that i've added on to is micro detail uh you don't have uh the 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 textures that you would hear in that uh, musical event. You don't hear the body of uh, the guitar, um, that the the pluck, there's there's a specific sound that you can hear when you have a system that's, that's refined, where you know it's a pick or a finger, and you can hear that event happen immediately. Um, and then the space around the musician, the space around the, the uh, the instrument that's where the the micro detail comes in. you actually you're hearing the human element of it at that point um th those are um those are concepts that are beyond really kind of the science those are the results of the science that goes into the the technology and and what we do from the materials to the driver development um to the time alignment all that stuff what are some of the other critical uh, objectives that uh, that you would list to these two. Uh, I'd say the the main one really is um, time alignment accuracy. Neuroscientists um, they've found that the ability for the the human uh, you know ear brain connection for the the, the ability for the human to uh, a human to detect um, the world and perceive the world around them. Um, there's not a lot of distance between your ears, right? And so an event, think about it from an evolutionary perspective and the way the body is designed. There's not a lot of space between your ears, but when you hear, when you're walking in a forest, you hear a twig snap, 
right? It snaps over here. It's not good enough for you to just say, well, it's, you know, 180 degrees. It's on the right side of my body, right? You need to know exactly where that is. So you, you can either fight or, or flight, right? Fight or run. Um, so from an evolutionary, uh, evolutionary uh, perspective, I think uh, that was designed in, into our bodies to understand the world around us and to survive. So taking it from the gross example of survival and walking around in the woods, uh, what does that mean from a musical perspective? Um, it, it's been calculated that a, a microphone that's set up in a, in a hall that the number of reflections and the number of uh, elements and, and data points that that microphone, the diaphragm of the microphone is picking up every second is in the thousands. So you think about the space between your ears, that distance, and your ability to perceive a hall, to perceive where the musical instruments are on the stage and to get a sense of the size of the hall. If time alignment accuracy is off, you start losing those details. There's still a musical event that you're hearing through your loudspeakers, but the ability for the system to, to, um, to confuse your body, to confuse your mind when you close your eyes, that it really, it transports you to the music variety or the concerto bow. And for you to get a sense of how big that is, meaning the walls in your listening room almost melt away because you feel like you're in that space, that requires time alignment accuracy. So let's follow up a little bit with that because that was one of my major questions uh, uh, for you. Um, Wilson is unique, I believe, in the industry in that you, you spend so much energy and research in time alignment and, and that manifests in your speakers being able to adjust themselves, uh, being able to be adjusted. Um, obviously, however, that's not true with the vast majority of, of other speakers out there. Um, and yet, one can certainly argue that um, those other speakers image really well, soundstage really well as well. So how how is um, proper time align manifested as far as us listening to your speakers? And if they weren't time aligned, how would they be different? Uh, that's a great question. That's a really good question. Uh, we all know that there's a phenomenon as we age, presbycusis. Frequency response um, is one of the, the main things that a lot of manufacturers tout. Hey, we've got flat frequency response. A couple of decades ago, that was much harder than it is nowadays, right? So any speaker really worth its weight in salt, and, and some speakers are very heavy, so that's a lot of salt. <laughs> uh, but uh, frequency with flatness in the frequency domain um, is, is almost a given nowadays. So uh, as we age, the ability for our bodies to detect, you know, high frequency um, extension diminishes. Timing, on the other, uh, timing on the other hand, is um, a a completely different neural pathway in the mind. So your ability to detect that snap in the forest and the timing elements of that um, does not diminish with times. Uh, with time, as does frequency response. So um, I, I guess there's an audiophile joke in, in evolution there somewhere. Um, so, so, yeah, so, so go back to frequency response. So if we, if we hung our hat only on frequency response, I think that we would be very competitive in market. But what does timing really do? Um, in controlled environments, in um, in scientific experimentations, it's been determined in, in, you know, in anechoic chambers, you know, custom headphones and whatnot, the ability to, for a, a human to detect the difference between two pulses, right? Where it sounds like one, but then it starts sounding like two is anywhere from 11 to 15 microseconds, right? That's millionths of a second. And that makes sense when you think about the distance between your ears and being able to pinpoint where that snap is in the forest. Um, our products are designed uh, to below 10 microseconds. The WAM and the XVX are down to two microseconds. Um, and you can, you know, if you have the, uh, have the, the chance to go and uh, check out the XVX in your showroom. Um, I'm inviting all who are listening to go to Adrian's place. If you take the micrometer, um, 
remembering where it was so we don't mess up all Adrian settings. <laughs> but every time you turn that, there are little indents as it goes. And each one of those is two microseconds. Um, so it, it goes from um, like watching a movie on a 4K screen TV where you see you see a mountain and you see the trees on the top of the mountain, that kind of detail. And then you quickly go to a VHS. You still see the mountain. It's still, you know, you, you know, it could still be vivid. It still could have all the things that a person expects when they see the movie. The explosions are there. You see the actor, you know who, you know, who the actor is. Um, but when it comes down to the refinement and, and getting down to tricking of the mind that is this event really here, that comes down to the timing. And that's something that Wilson Audio excels at and we do uh, almost exclusively in the industry. So, so to sum up, if I understand you correctly, what you're saying is that when, when the speakers are um, accurate in the time domain, uh, micro detail is better. Um, imaging and, and sound staging is better and sharper. Is that is that what I hear you? Say? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Going back to the um, what a microphone picks up in a hall, thousands of data points per second. So you know all the reflections, all the information that's coming and hitting that transducer. Um, to to recreate that accurately, you have to have time coincidence that is beyond what human hearing uh, comprehension is. Um, you had mentioned earlier that the XVX and the uh, WAMs are both accurate down to uh, 20 microseconds, was it? Two. Two microseconds, wow. Now, is that something that's measurable? Is that something that if, yes. if somebody, wow. And how yeah. would some, somebody go around measuring something like that? <laughs> uh, well, we, we have a lot of uh, in-house developed uh, tests, testing protocols. Uh, we use a lot of different uh, instrumentation. Uh, you know, laser vibrometers is something that we've talked a lot about. Uh, we have various uh, accelerometers, frequency response analyzers, uh, analyzers uh, pulse and, and tone generators, uh, lots of stuff that clicks, pops, buzzes, makes all kinds of noises. I'm, I'm not very excited about uh, giving our secret sauce and the tools away to our, our competitors. Um, I'm just curious. Yeah. I, I will say that it is measurable. The beautiful thing about it is when it's designed into a, a product that has the precision that we have, it's repeatable. That's the important thing. And it's adaptable to, uh, to a listener's room. So a listener that is living in a space, a grand space where they're 25 feet away from their loudspeakers and they're sitting at an ear height of 44 inches, we can adjust the modules to where it everything comes together where it's supposed to come together. Same as if someone lives in a room where they're nine feet away from the speakers and they're only at 36, they're very, you know, short, you know, 34 inch ear height maybe. You can adjust, you, our systems are designed to adapt. So all that time alignment accuracy is preserved and customizable for the listener. Um, let, let's move forward a little bit because I wanna be mindful of your time. Um, what was the stimulus behind the XVX and uh, now the LXV? That's a good question. Um, I think it's a part of our eternal DNA to progress, to create. I, there, there's, um, I, I think maybe that's why Legos are so popular, right? You know, the, you know, kids, we're, we're, we're born into this world we learn to you know, perceive the world around us and immediately we start putting things together or destroying things, right? you know, trying to understand. Um, we're always looking to excel and push the boundaries of what's, what's in front of us. We realize nothing is perfect. There's nothing perfect in life. However, there is progress. There, there is discovery and, and right now we have six experiments going uh, in, in various areas of uh, loudspeaker, um, uh, isolation devices, material research, uh, capacitor uh, manufacturing. We have a lot of experiments going on. And in the process of what, I'm call, what I call the grassroots uh, R&D is that we discover things, things that we didn't know before. And so when, um, 
when a product is up for uh, either being refreshed or completely uh, you know, revamped, or in the WAM's case, you had the WAM, the original WAM that was introduced in 1982, and then you know the WAM Master Chronosonic, which was you know developed over a five-year period and and released in 2017. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of development that we've done as a company and our abilities um, as far as our uh, manufacturing processes, the machines that we have, and the skill sets that we have in-house. There's a lot there that can contribute to um, making the original WAM what the WAM Master Chronosonic is. And um, uh, so I hope that that answers the question. Um, we're, we're always looking to progress. Um, my dad, you know, he said that, you know, perfection is really out of our, our reach, right? But excellence is within our reach. Excellence is something that we strive for every day. And in the process of this grassroots uh, R&D, we do discover a lot of things. What are, what are some of the things that um, came out of the WAM that you see in the XP axis? In other words, that you um, ethically and morally stole from your father. <laughs> yeah, we developed together. You know, there, there was, sure. uh, I don't know if I told you this story, but there was one point uh, we were developing the, uh, the Alex and the Wham together at the same time in the music room. And on the left channel, we had the prototype Alex. And on the right channel, we had the prototype Wham. And there was one point late at night where we were going back and forth and, and I'd work during the day and, and work on Alex and I would have consults with my dad. And then during the night, you know, he'd work on the way. And there was one point where, where I said, dad, you got to listen to this. Right. And I did steal the woofers. We, we developed them together, but I lovingly um, stole it from, from the Wham to introduce it in the Alex because it, the Alex was done before the Wham was uh, the Wham. I mean, five years, we, we thought it would be maybe a three year project Man, that there was so much involved with getting it right. I mean, getting getting uh, a loudspeaker down and as precise and the mechanics and repeatability to, to two microseconds, it's laboratory grade. Right. Um, so that took a long time. But I, you know, back to the story, I, dad, you got to hear this. And, you know, we flip back and forth and we had the ability to switch using the same signal going to both speakers so we could compare them. And uh, I said, dad, you know, I think this is, this is the only time I'm going to have a, a loudspeaker better than yours. And he's like, en enjoy it, son. It won't last long. <laughs> <laughs> he knew, we all knew the wham was still gestating. Right. And there was a lot that we were doing there. Um, so the, the woofer technology, uh, you know, we, we developed for the WAM and that made its way into the Alex, made its way into the, uh, the XVX and the Alex V. Um, and those woofers, with the, especially with the right amount of volume, um, they perform exceptionally well. Um, the concept of the gantry, that's something that, um, that my dad and I talked about during the Alexandria years. So Alexandria X, uh, XLF. Um, I wanted to cut out and I wanted to accentuate and relieve that pressure behind the mid ranges. But at that time, we didn't have uh, we didn't have a manufacturing process that could be repeatable and that that would work for the XLF and that architecture. It required a whole new architecture. And that's why there's not an XLF two that we decided to go full blanks, you know, canvas and go XVX, you know, what really, if, you know, with this size of a product, what can we do in, in this envelope? And the XVX is a result of that. Um, so the, with the Wham, you know, that, that's a, that was a fresh start product. And uh, our discussions during XLF about having that open architecture, um, per, we, you know, the Wham was the perfect opportunity to introduce narrower right um, and being solid metal and um, from a measurement perspective as that evolves and as we refined it having um, having a, a skeletonized substructure of metal with the x material and damping you know compounds in between it as a mixed material solution that really was the best solution so that informed us on how we could progress with uh, xvx and that's, that's why you see the open architecture on, on XVX. 
Um, I, I feel like the architecture for Wham, because it was the first time we were able to do that, um, was we were able to refine that in the XVX. Now, an, another thing we discovered between Wham and XVX is the benefit of having uh, material underneath the gantry, and we were able to develop in that time frame V material. And V material has, it, it's really propelled us forward and it's, it's created opportunities as far as acquiring the enclosure and any vibration between modules where modules are out of necessity separated for correct and accurate time alignment. We're making the whole architecture much quieter with the utilization of uh, V material. Um, so the gantry, you see the gantry uh, evolve from WAM to XVX and then going to, to Alex V. You see that, that, uh, that refinement continue. Um, also, with the um, Alex V, you introduced a new tweeter or at least a new way of, of making your tweeter. You, what, would, would you like to talk about that and elaborate more about it? Yeah, that um, driver refinement, uh, driver development is something that's always grassroots for us. We always have uh, several iterations of drivers that we're working on. And um, we just recently uh, received a couple of drivers and we've been experimenting with you know various cone materials and, and surrounds and, and magnet structures and whatnot. And this this exotic material, it on paper it looked good, and we were very excited to get it in as a potential for a future product development. And immediately you can hear it. You can hear, um, you know, even with good stuff. You, but the fact is that you take one element out of the the structure of a driver, out out of that the whole motor system, the whole all the pieces and elements. You change one thing, and you can hear it. Um, and so that I, more often than not, they're disappointments. There's theory and we hope that, it, you know, it pushes us forward. Um, so when we do come across something that that sounds better, that that measures better, that that brings us closer to that that musical event, I've, I've had the opportunity of listening uh, to live music in a lot of places in Vienna, the, the, the Musikverein, the Staatsoper, the Opera House, uh, the um, the concert house to the the Vienna Boys Choir, um, and you know throughout the world, Concerto Bal, Bravenel Hall, Dijon Concert Hall, uh, uh, Tabernacle on on Temple Square, and of course my dad's listening room <laughs> in the music room. That I'd say that's my favorite concert hall. I call it a concert hall, um, but all those places, um, they all have their own unique signature. When you close your eyes, you know you're in those spaces. Um, so when a loudspeaker does its job right, and it has the, the laboratory grade um, uh, accuracy that we engineer into our products, you get the sense of being there. It, it, it really is, it, it's, it's hard to explain. I, was, I, I had one of my buddies that, uh, it likes music. I think most people listen to music and like music, right? And... Uh, <laughs> I, I don't go around talking about, hey, I, you know, I'm Daryl Wilson. I, you know, I did, he, he, one day, and we've been friends for a while. He's like, what do you do? <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, I, I, I make these speakers and, and I, I'd be happy to, to have you experience it. And so I brought him up to the music room and he listened to the whams, right? So I played some, some stuff and, and there's the whams. Front, left and right speakers, no surround, no center channel. Uh, you know, there's a variety of amplifiers in the middle, right? And um, so I, I, the very first track, I, I could see kind of, you know, I, I said, close your eyes, you know, wh where does it sound like you're at? And he had kind of this puzzled, puzzled look, you know, his, his eyebrows were, and then he opened his eyes and he started pointing at the, uh, the amplifiers. He's like, you're telling me there's nothing coming out. Those aren't speakers right there. <laughs> I'm like, no, that, that's, that's the result of all the science, all the technology, all the refinements throughout the materials, the, the crossover elements, capacitors, the driver technology, the, the precision in the time domain, and us refining how we get that more and more precise and more and more repeatable from a manufacturing perspective. All, that's the result, is that really it confuses the mind and the body when you close your eyes that 
there is someone right there that's not there. There, you are in this space that you're not in. It's I think it's wonderful. It's truly a delight. All right, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the latest material, the uh, V material. Can you give us an understanding of what it is and what makes it so magical? Uh, uh, in an interview that I saw, uh, in fact, one of your videos about the XVX, you said that it was like a sonic black hole. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. A, it's a bizarre material. And for our applications, it's wonderful. And it's very, very effective. Uh, so we didn't have it while we were developing the WAM. The WAM, we had a version of it that uh, we called W material because it was first introduced in the WAM. Um, because we always have grassroots you know, research and development going, we quickly found um, a, a, a new combination of the soup that makes up this composite um, was superior to the uh, W material. And so we uh, quickly went to and called it the V material first introduced in the XVX. Um, and, and that's um, strategically used right underneath the gantry. Uh, once again, something that we learned from the WAM, and as we continued to uh, develop and test and see where materials and mixed material combinations are most effective, we found that resting the, uh, the whole gantry and separating the gantry with the upper modules away from the woofer was beneficial in the, um, in the musical presentation. Um, so um, between W and and V material, uh, we were we were using uh, W material underneath the um, what we call the truck beds, a micrometer system uh, that the upper modules rest on, and that took any vibrations from the upper modules and prevented uh, vibrations from going up into the modules. Um, and then as we were uh, continuing to research material this the the what became v material uh we got the results from that and all of us were were stunned we were stunned at how effective it was you put there there's an input of energy into it and how quickly it's internally damped and 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 how effective it is at not allowing that energy to go beyond the material and so all of us you know how how can we use this because of of what it is and the architecture, it can't be used as a material that um, is external. It has to be nested in to other materials, right? So it has a very specific application. So on the, um, uh, the XVX, you see it between the gantry and the woofer, right? Um, it's also underneath the, uh, the, the flatbeds in, in the micrometer system, um, you have uh, V material in there. Um, now, you know, fast forward to uh, Alex V, how could we effectively use that and use it in more locations? Uh, so the cross brace uh, above our, that the upper module sits on, we re-engineered that, that there was an insert there, but it was S material, which is more effective at what we want it to do than X material in that particular application. But V material is, is superior and the way that we, uh, we constructed that cross brace. There's further isolation beyond just the series one, Alex. And then um, went underneath the gantry, we we found with XVX that's that's effective. And then we've been developing uh, a spike system for a long time, and we we were <laughs> hitting our heads against the table. Our accelerometers were 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 picking up all the head pounding that we were doing, trying to make this better, right? And we were making small incremental improvements, and it's like, guys, we can do better than this. And uh, you know, as as Blake and I were, you know, working out the details, it's like, you know, why don't why don't we do a, why don't we just hog this whole diode out and put material in there we know is dead and quiet and and internally dampened. The measurements are 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 fantastic. The sonic results are fantastic, and more importantly, the structural integrity, the um, the system that spiked to the ground isn't moving back and forth because there's instability within the footer, right? It's still solidly planted to the ground on, and the drivers are coupled to very solid material. So the acoustical center isn't moving back and forth as this, the, the, 
the loudspeaker is operating, there's a lot of, of momentum with those drivers. And if you don't have a solid coupling surface there, the whole enclosure can move. And when you have the whole enclosure moving, you have a uh, smearing, you have that acoustical center moves. Um, once again, you see the mountain, you see the color, you see, you know, you know, it's a musical event, but do you see the trees on top of the mountain? That's the kind of thing that we're looking for. Um, so it was, it was a leap um, to, to go to the, uh, what became the Wilson Audio Acoustic Diode. And so V material, we're, we're discovering and experimenting and finding uh, very creative, fun places to utilize that and uh, future product development will benefit from it. Speaking of that, any future development products that you can speak about? Uh, yeah, so, um, well, yes. So we have uh, the, the pedestal, right? The pedestal is a product out of our special applications engineering department. You have Wilson Audio, which makes, um, you know, cost no object, uh, laboratory grade loudspeakers. And then, there were a lot of requests coming in for products that didn't fit that category. What about this? Can you develop this? What? And, and so we finally decided, you know what? We think that with the ideas that are being asked of us and, and ideas that we're generating internally, that we can present uh, market solutions that are outside of the realm of what Wilson Audio's definition is and create superior solutions in these other areas, uh, areas that we've stated in the past are like hostile environments or not ideal on desktops, right? On a desktop, uh, the tune tots, perfect example. You install it in a bookshelf. Is that the ideal place to put a loudspeaker? No, but you know, there are situations where you wanna have music in your office. You don't have the floor space, but you wanna have really good sounding music. You want, you want the best sounding for the situation it's in. Um, and then the, the, the whole concept of um, having Wilson Audio, a Wilson Audio element in your system, even if you don't have Wilson Audio loudspeakers. So the pedestal is, uh, it's, it's a very effective isolation device for all electronics. You put it underneath your electronics um, and it isolates you know, from whatever stand you're on, even the most expensive, stands that are on the market your product benefits by having these pedestals on there to further isolate uh, so i i love that idea that you know a system that doesn't have wilson audio loudspeakers still has wilson audio uh, modifications and upgrades so to speak same with the spike the acoustic diode so the acoustic diode we have a variety of of uh, neck down thread sizes where you can order the acoustic diodes and depending on your loudspeaker whether it's a current wilson audio product a legacy wilson audio product or really any other loudspeaker that's offered out there we have a thread size that matches so you can have that cut that that upgrade piece on your loudspeaker uh, so the pedestal, we have a light version and uh, a medium weight version, a standard version. Uh, right now, we're in the final development of the heavy version. There are a lot of heavy amplifiers out there <laughs> that, that right now the solution is using, you know, four or five pedestals. So they're not over compressed um, and they still work within their, uh, you know, their, their specification and, and uh, maximum operation, um, you know. Uh, parameters. So this heavy version, we're in final development. So we'll be releasing that product. We we also have another product that um, that I'll hint at that it goes low, and um, it's small. And so that that's a product that we'll be releasing soon. Um, and um, Adrian, I'm sure you're going to be telling people uh, as soon as you can on your website and through social uh, and special <laughs> events and what you're very good at that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get you back the next time. Um, last couple of questions. Um, how was it working with David? Let me, let me just sort of phrase this a little bit better. Um, one of the reasons I decided to do interviews as opposed to just videos mm -hmm. uh, was because very early on, I realized that as an industry, a lot of our uh, great minds were getting older and some were passing away. And, and I always wanted to learn from them because they went through in many ways, the golden age where, where nothing existed before. Suddenly you have stereo speakers, you had mono, now you have stereo. 
yeah. you had you know uh, um, um, LPs and now you had CDs and now you have streaming and they went through a lot of this. They, they saw all these different speaker concepts that were never there before. And suddenly you have these speaker concepts. <clears throat> and um, uh, it, it is one of my eternal regrets that I never did get a chance to sit down and, and have a formal interview with your father. Um, but my, my memories of him have always been incredible. And I spoke about that in my last um, part one XVX video about how he, um, how he made such a tremendous positive impression on a very young person like me who had tremendously bad self uh, image and how just by having him talk to me and speak to me like an equal um, um, in a very short period of time subconsciously made me feel like, oh, you know, I, I, I'm better than what I think. <clears throat> how was it working with him? Uh, you know, because a lot of people have difficulty working with family. And then secondly, what do you think he would think of Wilson Audio today under your leadership and your uh, uh, mentorship versus where he left it off? Yeah, I, I, the characteristic that you brought up uh, so eloquently is uh, something that I, I love about my dad and uh, something that I, I continue to uh, aspire to. And that is that the way that he treated people was with divine and eternal perspective is is that we're beyond any titles that we have um we're beyond uh, our station in life so to speak that um that we all come from th the same place and we're all going to the same place um and and respect is universal and the the way that that he treated people um i miss that I miss that. And I, and I try to do that. Um, there, there are times I fall short of that and, and I quickly repent and, <laughs> and try to do better. Um, yeah, big shoes, big shoes to fill. And, um, I, I knew that as I was, um, in the apprentice mode. Um, I've known that since I was a kid and I saw how people, um, you know, interacted with him, uh, how, you know, some people revered him. And, um, and I loved how he always was very cool headed about it. And he was always humble about it, and always grateful for it. Um, you, you think about life, and in a second, everything can change. And so, um, so, um, yeah, I don't know if this is really directly answering your question. My leadership style, I'd say, is a, a little bit different. Um, he and my mom grew up in an age where uh, their parents had gone through World War II. Um, really, a lot of the, the founders of this industry, legends of this industry, people that, um, you know, where the learning curve and, you know, the innovation, it was a very steep curve, a lot of things happening very quickly um the uh the leadership style and the uh the, the the boss mentality kind of that was prevalent in business back then i think was a direct result of following orders in world war ii right um and through time the the concepts of of leadership and the principles of of good leadership and um instead of telling um and and directing you're setting the example and um you know you're leading um you're pulling with the team instead of cracking the whip at the team um i think that those things have been refined and my dad uh went along with that and um the way that he he treated people was uh was much deeper than you know that was in a business book i think that what he did naturally are great um uh, processes of leadership um so what i try to do as a leader is is the same thing is um uh, allow people to fail forward and uh, failure is not something to be uh, criticized or punished it's something to be learned from and um create an atmosphere where where there's there's trust where people can come and feel comfortable about presenting ideas and new ideas and that things aren't just cast aside because it didn't come from the very top right um i I want to create a culture where where people realize that um, that there's a divine kinship 
that we're beyond what we do in this building. And um, really, I, I think my dad would say this, we have unlimited potential. And a part of, of leadership and good leaders is the mentorship process and, and internal talent development and helping raise people up and, and giving people the opportunity to become their best self. Uh, I know my dad did that with me and he was very patient with me uh, through my process. Um, and uh, I try to do the same for the team here at Wilson Audio. Well, thank you so much for spending so much time with me. I appreciate it. I know uh, we went past what we both agreed, but you're very grace, uh, uh, gracious for that. And uh, when, uh, when the next product comes out, we'll uh, continue this again. And hopefully uh, the next time, um, traveling will be okay again and we can see yeah. each other. Yeah. yeah. I look forward to it. I really do. Yeah, definitely. Well, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, please um, comment below, thumbs up, thumbs down, doesn't matter, share with everybody. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.